Religion versus science. The two are often portrayed as enemies with little common ground. Since each is seen as a gateway to truth, whenever they clash, the battles turn heated fast. Many of these hot spots are found within the pages of Genesis. The most frequent conflicts are fought over the origins of existence itself. For the most part, modern science agrees on how the universe became what it is today. About 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang gave rise to countless galaxies. Over many eons, the stars and planets were formed. On one such planet, Earth, simple life forms sprang into being. These would evolve into more and more complex organisms, of which the fittest triumphed over the weak. With a few minor hiccups along the way, life thrived across the globe until a species named humans emerged from the wild and dominated the rest. The literal reading of Genesis, however, suggests a much shorter timeline. The entire world was created in only six days. In the beginning, the planet was a formless mass of water, shrouded in darkness. On the first day, God brought forth light from the void. On the second day, he created the sky. On the third day, the Lord made dry land appear and covered it with plants of every kind. On the fourth day, God placed the sun and the moon in the starry heavens to mark the passing of the days and months. On the fifth day, God formed both the creatures of the deep and of the air. On the sixth day, the Lord made all sorts of animals to roam on the land, livestock and wild beasts alike. Last but not least, God formed man and woman to subdue all lesser beings. Since the earliest days of the church, there has been much debate about just how literally to read the story of Genesis. A number of ancient readers didn't view it as an historical account, including the renowned theologian St. Augustine. He saw several reasons why the text made much more sense as an allegory. For one, he argued that an omnipotent creator wouldn't need six days to build the world. God would have simply called everything into existence at once. Augustine also found clues within the text itself, such as how the narrative frames each day as morning and then evening, which even the most primitive cultures based upon the rising and setting of the sun. Yet according to Genesis, God didn't give the earth a sun until the fourth day. So then how could a day in Genesis mean what we think of as a day? After all, since the Bible claims a day to the Lord is like a thousand years, God must have a different conception of time than humans. So then can Genesis be reconciled with evolution? Many believe it can. As an allegory, Genesis matches evolution remarkably well, more closely than any other sacred tradition for how life came to be. Here's how. On the first day, God said, let there be light. In the beginning, Earth's surface was flooded with water. And so, on the second day, the Lord separated the waters and created the sky, giving Earth an atmosphere. On the third day, he made dry land to appear from the ocean. He then made plants to grow upon the bare ground. While the sun did provide some energy to the planet, the days used to be much shorter at first, scarcely over four hours. And so on the fourth day, God brought the sun and moon into alignment with the earth, setting the length of days and months as they are now. On the fifth day, God brought forth animals to the world. He made fish and marine life to team beneath the waves. The first winged creatures also appeared and took flight. On the sixth day, some animals migrated onto dry land and developed into countless new kinds, amphibians, then reptiles, and finally mammals, which grew ever more intelligent over the eras, culminating in the smartest creature of them all, humans. Some argue that evolution denies any unique relationship between people and God. For if humans are just a speck on this vast timescale, merely one species among billions, then what makes us special? Because we clearly are special compared to the rest, far more like God than any other mortal beings before us, capable of reason and compassion, language and civilization, music and art. If the Lord could choose some backwater tribes like the Israelites as his chosen people, instead of the many other greater nations, then he could certainly raise up Earth's most advanced species as his chosen creation. Whether God made humans by design or by chance, the end result wouldn't change. He still adopted humans to be his own. Although if the creation of the universe was so drawn out and complex, that begs the question, why doesn't Genesis simply depict what actually happened 
instead of cloaking the truth in metaphor. We need to remember the original audience for that book. The ancient Israelites who were clans of uneducated, nomadic shepherds. If God had revealed the daunting reality to their simple minds, it would have been like teaching biology in preschool. That's the reason why Jesus often taught in parables, because his audience couldn't otherwise grasp deeper ideas. It provided them with the basics until they were ready to discover the details. Was Genesis meant to serve the same purpose? So what do you believe about Genesis? Is it an allegory for the Big Bang and evolution? Does it mean that God made the world in six literal days? Or something else? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, then please subscribe for more.